Welcome everyone to this new video. This is about chapter 13, the cost of production. We are going to work throughout quick multiple choice. This is the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics, 7th edition. So here, the first question says, Rack opens up a lemonade stand for two hours. He spends ten dollars for ingredients. So we can say that the cost of this person is about uh, ten dollars. So remember all the ingredients, uh, they cost this value. Then um, they sell, I mean he sells sixty dollars worth of lemonade. So this is going to be the total revenue for this guy. Okay. So in the same two hours, he could have mowed his neighbor's lawn for $40. So automatically, we understand here that this is an opportunity cost. Because instead of mowing uh, his neighbor's lawn, he is preparing lemonade. So this is the opportunity cost. What uh, is foregone in order to... Um, because this guy is producing or is selling lemonade. So then the question is Rack has an accounting profit of an economic profit of. So remember, accounting profit they just take into account the flows of money. An economic profit we take into account the opportunity cost. And actually, inside the opportunity cost, we take into account the implicit cost and this one definitely is an implicit cost you don't need to pay that but it affects your decision to put or to open up a lemonade stand so then accounting profit could be 60 which is going to be the revenue minus the costs it's going to be 50 and then the economic profit is going to be the revenue minus the explicit cost which is going to be 10 minus uh, the implicit cost is going to be 40 so then really the economics profit is going to be 10 then the question we have these four options and naturally the question will be answered by the option 50 by uh, accounting profit and 10 by economic profit then the second one says diminishing marginal product uh, explains why as a firm's output increases so first we need to remember what do we refer when we talk about diminishing marginal product the idea of this uh, basic concept is that when we increase one worker here which is going to be the input the production will increase but it will increase in different quantities so as you notice here the slope of this curve is getting flatter so this is the principle of diminishing marginal product and at the same time we can compare that with the total cost here we have 30 which is automatically the fixed cost why remember fixed cost are the cost that they are not related with the quantity produced so here it doesn't matter how much quantity we produce we have to pay every single time this 30 dollars so this one the cost is like kind of this increases but the slope it gets steeper and this is they have like the opposite side of the coin so when this one is getting flatter the cost getting higher because your marginal cost of of people is going to be higher compared with the quantity produced they are not as productive and you need to pay in the same quantity them so for this reason this is the cost the marginal the total cost curve okay then at the uh, options we have here so naturally remember our two graphs so we need to find one who says or which says uh, this one is getting flatter and this one is getting steeper so then this one the production function gets flatter while the total cost curve gets steeper our third question says a firm is producing 1000 units at a total cost of 5000 
If it were to increase production to 1,001 units, its total cost would rise to $5,008. So what this information tell you about the firm? So here we're going to summarize the idea. We're going to retake some important concepts that you really need to take into consideration to understand this, um, this idea, this topic. So then remember the marginal cost we can define as the change in total cost over one usually because it's an additional unit. So here we can uh, abbreviate them with marginal cost is equal to delta. This triangle is called in the Greek alphabet delta which represents change, change in total cost over the change in quantities. So here we have what information we have here. We have here um, total cost, which is going to be 5,000. Then we have the marginal cost uh, concept Then we can infer with this information here. Automatically, there is an increase in production to 1,001 unit. So it's going to be the final one minus the initial one. It's going to be one as usual. Then we have the total cost, which is going to be this difference. So in the numerator, we have 8 over 1 is going to be 8. So this is the marginal cost. And what is the definition or the interpretation of that number? It means that if you produce one unit uh, additional, the cost of this particular additional unit is going to be $8. And what about the, the average total cost? So the average total cost here uh, is going to be total cost over quantity. Then we can abbreviate them as ATC equal total cost over quantities. And here is the quest the sorry the question. And here we have five thousand over one thousand is going to be five. So here the marginal cost of the 1001 unit is going to be 8 and the average total cost of this quantity produced is going to be 5. Then we have these options. So naturally we're going to choose this one when the marginal cost is 8 and the average variable cost is 5. Then a firm is producing at uh, 20 units with an average total cost of $21 and marginal cost of 15. If it were to increase production to 21 units, which of the following must occur? So here, how I understood and how I interpret this question was in the same way. So here we have the quantity produced is going to be 20, then the average total cost is going to be 25, and the margin cost is 15. Then we have these options. What how we can proceed to understand that. First, one important fact of this one is that automatically you recognize that the marginal cost is lower than the average total cost. So what does it mean? It means that the ATC is in a decreasing part. And why? Remember, the example of the average uh, grade point. So imagine that, the, that your uh, average so your GPA is 25 and your next exam is going to be 15 then automatically this one is going to decrease so for this reason when the MC is lower than this one this is decreasing of and on the other side if you have a better score in the next exam is going to be 30 so this one is going to increase so it's in the increasing part so we automatically infer that then uh, this time uh, we can infer that definitely the marginal cost will increase and how how actually take into account these two questions so we are here in the marginal cost which um, traditionally is going to be this so like a u shape a little bit so this is the fact we have here the marginal cost and here with the ATT so in this time remember we are here where the marginal cost is lower than the ATC. So this time uh, it is still needs to increase. Okay, so that's the, the general idea. But I must admit at this time that maybe you can answer at this time that the average, um, at this time that the marginal, the average um, total cost 
would decrease okay so both are this kind of tricky one but I would say that definitely because this is increasing so I would say that this is increasing uh, as well okay then the five one the government imposes a 1000 per year license fee on all pizza restaurants which cost curves shift as a result then important thing that it will not affect any quantities so why because it doesn't matter if one restaurant produces and sell 1000 pizzas another one they sell 500 pizzas any anyway they need to pay the same quantity so for this reason this is the fact they um, that everyone needs to pay then uh, we have these four uh, answers so let's focus on the changes so first we know that it's going to be a change in the fixed cost naturally and when there is a change in that remember that the total cost is equal to variable costs plus fixed cost so then it's going to be a change as well in TC which is the total cost then automatically if you divide this by quantities and this change naturally the average fixed cost will change as well so there's gonna be a change and the other one is gonna be this one when we divide by Q which is the definition of the average total cost it will change as well because the total cost it means the numerator changes so for this reason I should say that the average total cost is one and the average fixed cost they change the um, the last one is about if a higher level of production allows worker to specialize in particular tasks a firm will likely exhibit of scale and average total cost so we need to um, remember our different cost uh, in the short run and in the long run so when we talk about economies of scale or diseconomies of scale of constant returns to scale we are talking about the long run remember the difference between short and long run it doesn't mean that one two years it depends on the field but the basic idea is that in the long run you don't have fixed costs and all the costs are variables and you can change the size of your factory so for this reason you can evolve in some way the different plans that you can have in the short run so the idea is that when you uh, have the first the first part you have a specialization of the of the workers so for this reason they face uh, an economies of scale so for this one we want to a specialization this is going to be exhibit economies of scale and the average total cost diminishing okay and diminishing average total cost so here uh, there's going to be natural economy some falling okay I hope it's worth you have better idea uh, I don't have like this is my opinion is how I think that you can solve these exercises if you think that maybe something is wrong that we can learn together something I really appreciate you coming you come and remember subscribe and ask your comments that's it I apologize again for, for my voice because maybe it's not the best today but I really want to make this new video okay have a great day bye bye thank you